Welcome to uh, the week ahead. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Sani. We are broadcasting live. Uh, this week I am broadcasting from home. Uh, this show will uh, examine the kind of items that will take place over the next seven days. Uh, and uh, we've entered the fourth week of September. There you have it. Um, fourth quarter is here. And uh, let's uh, do a quick recap into what has happened throughout the uh, year and we'll try to see if we can uh, transpose on what will happen next week. Uh, a lot of things will uh, take place uh, when it comes to the parliament. Um, for instance, the government uh, will channel a total of 500 million ringgit to SMEs beginning this uh, Tuesday uh, through what they call the Prihatin Special Grant um, or Grant Khas Prihatin 4.0. Uh, this is according to the Prime Minister, uh, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri. Uh, he says that more than 1 million recipients will benefit uh, from this uh, program. The 500 ringgit aid for SMEs will be distributed twice in September and November. Ismail Sabri said the aid will be channeled directly into the bank accounts registered with the Prihatin Special Grants System. Applicants can check their status on gkp.hasil.gov.my. He added that so far 6.08 billion ringgit has been channeled to SMEs under the grant since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Also, uh, a few other things are going to take place uh, in the parliament. For instance, uh, the anti-hopping uh, bill, uh, according to the former Dewan Rakyat Deputy Speaker, Datuk Sri Azalina Osman. Oh, by the way, uh, there's a slight uh, story to this because Azalina turned up as the current Deputy uh, Speaker of the Dewan Rakyat as well uh, on one of the parliamentary sitting days uh, last week. But that aside, uh, Datuk Sri Azalina said that uh, she has urged uh, the government to fast-track the bill to include her recall election bill as part of the proposed anti-hopping law. Uh, the Pengerang MP said that the de facto uh, law minister and the Speaker of the House should expedite this bill as frogs can jump anytime. Let's hear her out. Tetapi lompat, atas lompat. Parti ni bahaya dia satu saja. Dia lompat apa pun sebab kerana dipecat, kerana digabungkan, Kerana, iyalah, bila dah tak suka, dia pergilah. Mewujudkan satu mekanisme melalui rang undang-undang ini, pemecatan ahli parlimen, supaya senarionya lebih terbuka. Dan diberikan kuasa kepada rakyat untuk menentukan. Sama ada nak ganti ke tak ganti kepada yang lompat itu. Azalina had submitted a notice to table a private member's bill titled Dismissal of Members of Parliament Bill 2021 on September 3rd. Last Monday, the Memorandum of Understanding signed between the government and Pakatan Harapan Opposition Coalition included anti-hopping as part of reforms and intends to table the proposed law by the first meeting of Dewan Rakyat next year. So what's also going to happen this week in the parliament is that we're going to see the Memorandum of Understanding that was signed between the government and the opposition and how they are going to collaborate uh, closer that will take place in the coming week. Uh, according to the Pakatan Harapan as well as the PKR chief, Amin Fazil, who is also the Lembapata MP, says that of all the 10 or 20 things that was mentioned in the MOU, one thing is clear. Uh, the first thing uh, that they wanted, which is uh, the uh, free of uh, interest rate for the moratorium, was already been achieved. Uh, that was ticked and done. But uh, having said that, uh, we have to talk about the reaction that was uh, taken by the Warisan president, Datuk Sri Shafi Abdal. Uh, he has uh, maintained uh, the criticism of the MOU that was signed between these two parties. Um, and uh, whether or not uh, the Warisan MP is going to rally against uh, the basically the majority of the opposition bloc remains to be seen. Uh, the Semporna MP reminded his fellow opposition lawmakers that they had been elected to federal power back in general election 14 in 2018 um, and had their mandate stolen from, the, from them the following year. Uh, so here he is uh, reminding uh, his compatriots in the opposition bench about what was at stake. Kita kuasa yang ada diberi mandat oleh rakyat, stolen mandat itu. Yes, kita akui betul. We agree, we agree. And yet, 
Now we are working with them. We sign memorandum with them. We don't realize that. Where is the values in our life? As a leader of this country, as a politician in this country, we have to have clarity dengan izin. Dari segi nilai kehidupan kita, kuasa yang diberi mandat, kena itu rakyat pada hari ini, the root cause was instability because of that. Ini yang kata-kata jumlah tak cukup, jumlah tak cukup. We are playing with numbers. We are playing with numbers for human life in this country. Shafi'i said even if he doesn't sign the MOU, that does not mean he does not care for the country and its people. He explained that they should always be the priority, but many politicians are driven by greed and lust for positions. On Monday, the government and opposition leaders signed a historic MOU in Parliament, paving the way for a bipartisan and consensus approach in bringing stability and reform for the nation. Watch out for the uh, 12th Malaysia plan that is going to be built uh, any time now. Um, that's going to be debated in the parliament. But because of the MOU that was signed between these two parties, between the government and the majority of the lawmakers uh, in the opposition bench, uh, we're going to see some friction, uh, particularly amongst Warisan and uh, Pejuang members, uh, with the rest of the Pakatan Harapan members. But having said that, uh, proceedings will take place uh, over the next few uh, weeks or days. Uh, and of course, uh, we will uh, keep an eye out for the kind of proceedings that will take place there. Our next uh, item that we need to keep an eye out is on the Malaysia My Second Home program because uh, last week uh, the Johor ruler uh, made a comment uh, saying that the MM2H program was not done uh, according to uh, with thought or with planning. Uh, Sultan Ibrahim Sultan Iskandar criticized the Home Ministry over its reluctance to review the tighter conditions announced uh, for the Malaysia My Second Home program. And uh, the Sultan, through his uh, posting on Facebook, said that he will raise it with the Prime Minister, uh, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob. So we would assume that the issue will be discussed and will be debated in the upcoming week. Let's hear him out. He called the decision mind-boggling and outrageous considering the program had brought huge economic benefits to Malaysia and that the tighter conditions will lead to an enormous loss of revenue for Johor since the state is a popular MM2H destination. He added that the Home Ministry should only revoke the visas of Aaron participants instead of enforcing a blanket ruling if the nation's security was really its main concern. MM2H will be reactivated in October but with much tighter conditions, including a minimum offshore income of 40,000 ringgit a month compared to 10,000 ringgit previously. Participants will also need to have a fixed deposit of 1 million ringgit compared with the previous conditions of between 150,000 to 300,000 ringgit. We'll go for a short break. We'll be back after this. Welcome back. This is the week ahead. Uh, we must talk about COVID and the vaccination programs. Our next story revolves around the item of vaccine shortages uh, because the World Health Organization said that uh, the world could go back to square one if the issue on COVID-19 vaccine shortfall is not addressed, particularly amongst poorer nations. I don't know whether Malaysia is in this group, but uh, it's worth noting uh, that around the world, including that of Africa, uh, they face a shortfall of over 470 million doses of vaccines this year, raising the risk of the uh, COVID-19 expecting to be seen or with new and deadly variants. The COVAX alliance set to ensure equitable delivery of vaccines cut short its projected shipments to Africa due to global shortages. It will now ship some 150 million fewer doses of vaccines than planned. WHO Africa said the staggering inequity and severe lack in shipments threatens to turn areas in Africa into breeding grounds for vaccine-resistant variants. The organization projected only 17% of the continent's population will be vaccinated by year-end, compared to the initial 40% target. Um, back home, we must talk about the third dose. Uh, the health minister, uh, Kairi Jamaluddin, who in himself making news this morning because he made a surprise visit to Kajang Hospital. Uh, but uh, he said that uh, the issue of the third, third Third dosages of the COVID-19 vaccine might be done um, as early as uh, next October, meaning October 2022. Let's hear him out. 
Ada mungkin yang tanya, oh dos yang ketiga ini bermaksud dua dos itu tidak berkesan. Tidak. Banyak negara sudah uh, memulakan dos penggalak. Termasuklah uh, di Amerika Syarikat, di UK, Singapura. Ini adalah untuk kita meningkatkan lagi. Meningkatkan lagi uh, sistem imun kita terhadap uh, COVID-19. So, buat masa ini, <coughs> kita telah pun... Uh, Uh, kita telah pun mendap- kita sedang mendapat uh, apa nama ni maklumat daripada pengeluar-pengeluar vaksin uh, untuk didaftar di bawah NPRA. Uh, dos yang ketiga ini perlu mendapat kebenaran NPRA sebab NPRA hanya bagi kebenaran contohnya Pfizer dua dos saja, AZ dua dos saja, Sinovac dua dos saja. So sekarang ini semua pengeluar vaksin ini saya telah minta mereka hantar maklumat dos penggalak ini kepada NPRA. Saya jangkakan dalam tempoh masa seminggu dua boleh diluluskan. Lepas itu saya akan buat pengumuman jenis vaksin apa. Boleh campur ke tidak. Kena ambil vaksin yang sama ke tidak. Semua itu saya akan umum kerja. Tapi stok temu memang masih banyak lah. Stok, stok insyaAllah cukup lah. InsyaAllah cukup. And of course, I don't know whether this falls under the COVID news, but uh, the Langkawi travel bubble uh, is uh, still being uh, hotly debated amongst uh, Malaysians. And travellers heading to Langkawi under the travel bubble scheme, uh, which began last week, must take COVID-19 tests before departure. Health Minister uh, Khairi Jamaluddin said that only those who test negative will be allowed to continue to travel to Langkawi. Negative test results either through an RT-PCR or RTK antigen swab test must be shown at entry points at airports or ferry terminals 48 hours prior to the departure date. Travellers can also purchase their own saliva self-testing kits and take them to the airports or ferry terminals to do the COVID-19 test at designated screening sites. This requirement, said Kyrie, will apply to all travellers aged 7 and above. For children aged 6 and below, only a symptomatic screening will be done based on their abilities to produce saliva. Children must be accompanied by a parent or guardian who are fully vaccinated, not a positive case or a close contact to a positive case. One more short break. We'll continue after this. Welcome back to The Week Ahead, where we will explore some of the items that will take place next week. Uh, Before we jump to all the other stories, uh, it's worth noting about the corporate world, what will take place next week. Um, There are three things in particular. One is, of course, the Securities Commission. They will unveil their third capital market master plan, uh, or CMP3. Uh, It will feature the strategic positioning of Malaysia's capital market uh, uh, role. Um, That's coming up next week. The second item is, of course, IGB Commercial Read. Will, they will make their debut on the main market of Bursa Malaysia, um, initially scheduled to be listed on July 30th, but the company delayed its listing. It's going to take place next week as well. And finally, of course, the uh, Department of Statistics of Malaysia, they're planning to announce the inflation data for August. Uh, that will take place on Friday, the upcoming Friday. Um, now let's uh, take a look into the job market and how the job market plans to look like after the pandemic because we've been suffering from this friction over the past two years or nearly two years. Uh, the Awani Tonight team spoke to Seek Asia's uh, Simran Kaur uh, to give us some of the answer. Enjoy. Improvement is very much due because of the opening of the economic sectors and social activities being allowed slowly now in stages, right? Um, They have also noted an increase in labour force participation was the same time last year, again, as a result of more businesses opening and people kind of coming back into the workforce, um, where else previously, you know, we did see quite a bit of return, um, people getting, losing their jobs and people kind of being laid off, right? Um, On our end, similarly, we note a similar trend with employment market, kind of really on a road of recovery, Um, and it begins to open up. And really, this is also part of um, the national vaccination program and the impact that that has had um, on the market. Simran also championed a hybrid work arrangement for the future as more people have grown accustomed to working from home. The strategy will be key for organisations, taking into account um, flexibility, governance, uh, making sure the right tools are available in place, Um, both at the workplace and at home to support such an arrangement um, for for their employees, right? Um, 
And also, I think one view is that we need to pivot and also pilot um, this arrangement until we really feel that this is kind of reached a comfort point for an organization. So it's not going to be a one fit all arrangement for everybody. Um, but I think it's definitely a direction the organizations are going to have to go look into. For Simran, there needs to be a give and take for both employers and employees in order to improve the job scene in the country. Learning and relearning and unlearning is going to be something that has to be in our constant DNA and we need to be comfortable in doing this, right? Um, we do see an increase in the need of digital talent um, to kind of support all this, you know, with everything kind of going online now, you're going to need more and more digital talent to support this, right? But you're also going to have talents along critical thinking, problem solving, um, social intelligence, entrepreneurship. I mean, these are all the new skills that are going to be very much in demand moving forward, right? And for employers, I guess, you know, you're not going to find that unicorn. So I think the acceptance of the fact that you're not going to find the unicorn is going to be very important. The willingness to bring someone on board, um, on the job training, coaching, development, and then have that person grow within your organization, um, that's going to be another key thing moving forward, right? Um, I, everyone loves someone who's ready to go to work, but the reality is they're going to be more, it's going to be harder to find those people, and they're going to be lesser of those people in the market moving forward. Uh, so another item that we want to direct your attention to is the conversation that uh, the Awani Tonight team had with the new Mosti Minister, previous Health Minister, Datuk Sri Dr. Adam Baba, because uh, they were talking about the need for a clear policy coming out from that ministry when it comes to the innovation of the social and economic uh, improvement uh, and in order for them to produce global talents. Uh, enjoy the discussion between uh, Astro Awani with that of the Mosti Minister. We have to build a socio-economic uh, innovation ecosystem uh, so that uh, all innovation uh, can be translated into a uh, product that uh, will be uh, commercialized and able to as accepted by the world. Third is uh, regarding uh, our socio-economic innovation uh, policy so that uh, we have to have clear innovation policy so that uh, any innovation that created by our people can uh, translate into the experimental development and we'll be able to be in a showcase for, for the nation so that uh, not only we cultivate the uh, innovation culture but we also enhance the commercialization part of these products. He said Mosti's current economic policy aims to bridge the gap between social economic drivers and technology drivers. We were able to see uh, incoming innovation and uh, product development. So with that, uh, there will be uh, those who want to start uh, or getting their seed uh, fund eh, to start uh, whatever innovation and uh, commercialization uh, development. So we will, while we are waiting for uh, Unicorn uh, to uh, be developed within five years that mostly targeted earlier, uh, we would like to see that uh, the principle of uh, value of debt uh, must be uh, soft. And uh, this uh, match, matching with uh, fundamental uh, research uh, go together with uh, commer commercialization of the product. In between, we have to make sure that the startup company uh, always being uh, monitored and uh, gi giving the handful hand so that uh, they will not fail. So another thing that we want to explore is, of course, uh, the study of uh, the suicide rates in Malaysia. Uh, if you um, missed it, uh, the uh, World uh, Anti or Prevention of Suicide Day was celebrated last week. Uh, and uh, throughout the week, we did speak to folks uh, to understand a little bit better about this issue. Uh, because Malaysia has reported 638 
cases of suicide uh, in the first seven months of this year, of 2021. Uh, and this is a 143% rise compared to the same period last year. Uh, so the Awani Tonight team spoke to the governor of Rotary Malaysia, Datuk Bindi Rajasekaran, um, because he says that even with these grim uh, figures, we may never know the true data as many cases go uh, unreported. Enjoy the conversation. Now, it has been proven, and it is a statistics according to WHO, that uh, it's more prevalent in men than women, suicide cases. But in attempted suicide cases, the, the cases are more in women rather than men. So I, I guess um, it just boils down to, to you know, recognizing the importance of the conversation on mental health. And uh, lately, with, with what has been uh, in the media, we can notice that this is increasing. So we, we are trying to reach out to the community to create the awareness that there is medical help for those with such issues. And it's okay not to be okay. In data revealed by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, he said emotional pressure and financial difficulties are the highest motivations for the recent spate of suicide cases in the country. The effects of COVID-19 pandemic has had an immense psychological effect on mental health, coping with unprecedented homebound situations, economic driven stress and anxieties and the changes in social interaction and engagement. All these are causes leading to depression and leading to suicidal thoughts. In tackling cases as complex as suicide, she said it takes collaborations between different agencies and sectors of society, adding that the health ministry's recent call to decriminalize suicide as an important step towards suicide prevention. Rotary Malaysia, through its You Are Not Alone campaign, is calling on those in need to not be afraid to seek help, where helplines are available on the website reachout.my. Now, this campaign was primarily to raise awareness regarding the ways to get assistance, as many do not know where to reach out for help. Many of these cases of suicide and attempted suicide is because they do not know where to go. So we must normalize the conversation and encourage those affected to seek help. So um, if you need help, uh, particularly when it comes to just having somebody to talk to, uh, reach out to uh, Befrienders Malaysia. You can also reach out to all the other suicide hotlines um, that is made available uh, on the Ministry of Health websites and all their social sites. Um, there is always a person out there to speak to, uh, and uh, I would urge you to uh, think about the conversations that needs to be had. Um, you're not alone. That's it for this show uh, when it comes to the week ahead. Uh, if you want to chat with us uh, with some of the ideas uh, that you want to talk about, uh, just use the hashtag Awani News or tag me at Ibrahim Saninet on all my social sites or all on um, Astro Awani's sites. Until then, thanks very much for watching and goodbye.